Hello everyone, Joe from Central Jersey Conrail and Inscale and welcome to episode 13. This episode we're going to be wrapping up the work on the staging yard. We're going to be uh, putting together the panel, uh, wiring in the LEDs and the switches. We're going to be installing tortoise switch machines. I'm also going to show you how to install Digitrax UP5 uh, panels. So let's get started. Okay, here we are getting started. First step what I'm going to do is I'm going to hang the frame up on the wall. I made sure to make the frame only 16 inches wide so that I could put it right into the studs. Next I cut a piece of acrylic and attach it to the framework. I attach it using machine screws and T-nuts. I do this so that in the future I can remove the panel for any kind of maintenance. a piece of plywood inside the framework to attach any kind of electrical appliances. Now I mark and cut a hole in the sheetrock. This is so that I can run wires into the panel from underneath the staging. I do this so the panel has a nice clean appearance and there's not wires hanging down. Now I do the same thing underneath the staging area. The orange things are low voltage old work boxes. I do this because it prevents the sheetrock from ripping and also you can install wall plates. Now I install a wall plate to cover up the hole. Now I install the terminal strips inside the panel. These will be for connecting all the wires. Now I remove the acrylic for painting. First I remove the protective film off the back side. Then I start laying out my track diagram with automotive pinstriping. Here I tape the acrylic panel to my work mat so that I can use the lines to make sure that the taping is straight. spray paint the base color black and let it dry. Then I go and remove all the automotive pin striping. This reveals the track diagram which will be white. Then I spray painted the white and let it dry. Once it was dry I removed the protective cover. Now I start assembling the switches at the bench. I used this wiring diagram from Circuitron. Then I made up my own wiring diagram using the colored wires I was going to use. Here's the part number for the switch. I made sure to use heat shrink so that there was no bare exposed wire inside the panel. Now I start assembling the edge connectors. I also made a diagram for the color wire I was going to use. Here's the part number for the edge connectors. Again, I used heat shrink to cover any bare exposed wires. Now 
now using my bench tab power supply, I tested all of my toggle switches to make sure they are assembled correctly. Now I installed the key switch and checked to see that it had good voltage. Now I drilled the hole and mounted the amber LED to indicate power. Now I installed the wire from the key switch to the uh, terminal strips. Now I went ahead and drilled all the holes for the toggle switches and the red and green LEDs. Here I tighten down all the toggle switches. Now I just push the LEDs into the panel. And now we're ready to move on to wiring the panel. Okay, so up to this point, I've gone ahead and uh, put together the panel. I showed you guys how I painted that. I also went ahead and uh, installed all the switches and LEDs. And as you can see by looking at the panel, the, the LEDs are on. Uh, I've already gone ahead and I've installed one switch. It was kind of a test for me. So um, now with that being said, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and walk you through the, uh, the actual installation of putting the tortoise underneath uh, the uh, staging yard. So uh, first, before we begin, you know, everything I've done to this point, um, I've got straight from the Circuitron uh, instruction manual. Um, you can go online, you can download it. Um, they have the, uh, the first two pages and then there's some um, supplemental instructions like for offset mounting. Um, there's also another supplement uh, for uh, signal and routing uh, wiring schematic. There's also another supplement that uh, shows you the um, the uh, suppliers for the edge connectors that I'm using and then um, also how to wire in uh, LEDs so uh, I'm just do I'm just following right along with their instruction manual I'm not making anything up as we go so um, let me uh, show you how we did it all right so first thing in the installation process what I did is I, I put together the, the, the switches now I use their uh, diagram four on uh, the second page of the instruction manual and uh, assembled them as recommended by their their wiring schematic here and uh, so what I did is I made a, a quick uh, diagram for myself using the color wiring that I was using so that this way everything's all the same for uh, troubleshooting purposes. So on the flat spot on the uh, double pull double throw switch I uh, marked that as top and then what I did is I took uh, on the, the bottom two poles, uh, the left I put a blue wire and then on the right I put a, uh, a white wire and then I crossed, crisscrossed those over to the top poles and, uh, and also soldered them to the, the red power and the, on the left and the black power on the right. And those power lines were coming in from the, my power source. And then the middle two poles on the switch went out to the turnout motor, uh, black, uh, black on the right and red on the left. So what you're essentially doing with that double pole double throw switch is when you're on the top, um, when you're on the top portion and you're selecting off the top terminals, uh, what you're doing is, is um, your, we'll just say for, for argument purposes, your red is positive and your black is negative. Um, you're taking power to the switch, positive, negative. Then when you go to the bottom selector, because of the, the white and blue crisscross, what you've done is you've swapped it and now you're taking negative, positive. So that makes the, the switch motor go back the other way. So just a little understanding for you wh why those wires are crisscrossed. It, it's to reverse the polarity on the motor. Then the other thing I did was I went ahead and I made up my I made up some pre made uh, uh, edge connectors um, and I, I used a, a I made a diagram again to keep the uh, the color uniformity and this way when I'm underneath I don't have to be soldering over top because uh, the first time I did it it was just it was very difficult and, and tiring so this way all I have to do is just strip the wire do a quick uh, front end splice and then a, a quick solder job so that'll be much better than working on these small little uh, edge connectors the terminals over your head so so now that we got the the, the switch is done get the edge connectors I'm ready to do the next step and the next step is what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use my uh, my snake and I'm going to fish some wire down through 
Um, what I've done here is I made this hole so that this way I can keep the wiring all clean and it's all hidden in the, in the wall to go down underneath. So I'm gonna grab my, uh, my snake and I'm gonna run it up so I can pull some power line down so I can take power from the switch down to the, the tortoise. So, all right, so uh, why don't you just follow along and I'll, I'll walk you through how I did this. Okay, so this is my snake. Um, I got this at uh, Home Depot. I've had this for a while for doing the whole basement. Um, so what you do is you just pull this wire out and you stick it up through the bay. Now, um, if you've got a, a wall that's got no insulation, it's gonna go fairly easy. So a lot of you may watch the video and say, oh, that looks fairly simple, but when you're dealing with insulation or if there's any obstructions in the bay, it's gonna slow you down. Fortunately, when I laid out the panel, I picked a bay that had no, no obstruction. There's no wire runs going this way, and there's no piping, and there's no insulation. So it, should, it goes pretty, pretty quickly. And that has never happened before. Of course, it's going to happen on camera. I've never had to go right through the hole like that. That's, that's, that's great. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my, uh, my, bench, my uh, step stool set up so I can just pull the wire right in. Okay, so what, what you can see I've done there is I took my painter's ladder, I put some bar clamps on it, and then I just threw the spools on there. So this way when I'm pulling it, uh, the wire just pays off the spools and it doesn't get all tangled up. Just, uh, just came to me and uh, just makes it a lot easier when you're running line through the wall, so. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this wire and because uh, it's such small gauge wire I just run it through this little loop here I'm just going to tie a little knot. You want to tie a knot or tape it off with some electrical tape because uh, otherwise when you're going to pull it through the wall the wire could come undone and get stuck in the wall and then you got to start all over. Alright, so now, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and pull my snake back down through the wall and it should pull the wire with it. Okay, so now uh, what we're going to do is we're going to pull this uh, real gently because sometimes the, uh, the wires get tangled up. As you can see, I'm bringing out one of the, the negative leads already. So, uh, sometime or not. Pull this wire out of here real quick. There we go. Carefully undo that because that's already hooked up. I'll pull the snake and get that out of here. This is less stuff in the way. All right. So, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and lead this down and just pull this through the wall. And then uh, I've already got holes cut in the uh, holes cut in the bench work, and I'll feed that up to where uh, the tortoise is going to be. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and mount the uh, tortoise switch motor underneath. Now, um, what you need to know about these is that they're very tolerant on uh, on positioning. Uh, they work pretty well. Uh, you don't have to be like it doesn't need to be precision measurements to get these things to work. Uh, this first one here I just I did by eyeball and it worked. What happened was they have a template to um, that comes with the instruction manual for mounting and drilling. However, at some point what, through the download process and printing out, the size got off and when I went and pre-drilled the holes for the uh, number four screws, they didn't make up, made, um, they didn't match up. So I just took the template and threw it away and just uh, started doing it by eye. So this is how I did it. Okay, so um, first thing you need to do is you need to drill a quarter inch hole that goes through the sub road bed, through the cork, and uh, up to where the draw bar is. So what the best thing to do is to lay out your, uh, your track and your uh, turnouts, mark the place of the draw bar, specifically where the hole is where the wire is going to go through, and that's the center point of your hole, and then use a quarter inch drill bit to go ahead and drill that hole. So at this point, what, it, what you need to do is this this part here needs to line up with that hole. So what I'm going to do is put it in here like this, so that it lines up. And then I'll take my uh, take a up here, right? and then I'll pre-drill a hole. Next what I'll do is I'll go ahead and uh, take my uh, Yankee screwdriver and uh, I don't even bother using a drill because these are such small, uh, they're such small screws in such small area that I just use a, one of these. Tighten it down real, a little 
firm to hold it. I'm going to go ahead and mark uh, the position hold and put some more power holes and put more screws in. Okay, so now that we got the tortoise up underneath the, uh, the staging yard, first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and wire it up so that I can test it. I want to test to see which way that the drawbar is throwing in reference to the switch. Make sure I have the switch mounted in the panel the correct way. So let's do it. So now sort through this mess of wires here. This is going to the turnout. Now off of my, t my s switch here. This is the power in lines. This is the lines to the turnout. So what I'm going to do first, just for testing, I'm going to strip these wires and connect them with uh, alligator uh, clips. The reason I'm going to do this is because uh, I just want to check it because if the draw bar is going in the wrong direction, all you have to do is just reverse the polarity connection. So I would just cross the wires. Maybe. Okay, so I went ahead and make up some leads. Now, what I've done here is I've taken these terminal strips and I put barrier clips on them and on the back. And what that makes it is like a, it links them all together. So uh, this way you don't have to worry about putting in jumper wires and all that stuff. So now it's like a big distribution block. So it just makes it a lot easier when you're doing a panel, just to invest them in barrier clips. Um, now I'll go ahead and prep my edge connector. Um, so my power leads, what I did when I soldered them, I twisted them together so I know which one was the power in because uh, I have another red one here and that's for the uh, power of the frog. So we'll just go ahead and uh, strip these right quick. And I'll go ahead and down. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and install this. And uh, what I did is, uh, number one is the ground number one pin because it goes uh, the num they, they number from left to right so number one is closest to you in the camera and if you're looking at the front of the switch it's the left so now power up the panel okay so uh I've actually got to go backwards now. I got to take the turnout down. I tested it; it works. It's fine. But what I forgot to do is I forgot. Um, there's the. It comes with this screw, and what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to thread it into the front portion here to cut the threads. Okay. Unfortunately, there's no room down there because uh, the switch is about like an inch from the joist uh, of the bench work, so I can't really work. So I'm going to pull it down, thread the screw in, and then the second thing I got to do while it's down is I got to make up the uh, the spring. So the spring here, what you have to do is you have to bend it yourself. You have to bend it yourself so that it looks like the picture here in the uh, in the diagram. So it's got a like an 80 degree bend on the end, and it's got a 15 degree bend halfway down. So what I'll do is I'm going to pull that switch uh, the tor tortoise down. I'm going to go ahead and get that all set up to go. Okay, so now what I'll do is I'll thread that spring through the fulcrum, and then a little. 80 degree bend you made needs to go in that hole in the black block. Alright, so there you had it. I had to do it off camera. I was cursing too much. And it, well, when you put it up underneath the layout and you're putting that, that in, it's a lot easier because you're not sitting here holding it with uh, trying to fuddle around with it. So when I, if you lay it, when it's hanging up, it, trust me, it's a lot easier. The first one I did just went right in. This one was difficult because I'm fumbling around with it. So, and of course, it's because it's on camera. So. All right, so now that it's all set up, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this up under the layout, thread this through the drawbar of the turnout. Now, this is not normally how you do it. It's just that I'm running into uh, space considerations down underneath because of that joist. Okay, so now it's back up there. It's connected. You can see the, uh, the spring wire is through the, uh, through the fulcrum, and then it's up through the layout into the drawbar of the turnout. So I've already tested it and I had to move my fulcrum up a little bit just to get enough throw on the, uh, the turnout. So if you come up here and look, you can see that the, uh, the spring is sticking up through the drawer bar now. Now I'm going to leave it just like this until we're all done. The last step we'll do is we'll trim that down. Okay? So now when we, uh, we power it up, and you can see it moves. Alright, so, so there we go. Next step. 
we're going to start figuring out the LED. So inside this unholy mess of wires is uh, here's the LEDs for the turnout that we're working on. So all I've done is I've taken a red and a green LED and then what we're going to do is we're going to wire it in series. Now that's what Circuitron recommends. Now the other thing you need to realize is that with the LEDs there's no need for a resistor because the tortoise switch machine makes 600 ohms of uh, resistance on its own. So this way when you're hooking up LEDs there's no need to put a resistor in. There's a positive that goes to the switch I'm going to put that on one side of the series. And you're going to take the positive side that goes to the, to the tortoise and put that on the other side of the series of LEDs. And now I'm going to lift this up and try not to create a short so I can show everybody. And there you go. So now we got the red is lit. We reverse the polarity through the switch, which turns the switch motor, and that makes the green LED come on. So now that's set. Now, if you go ahead and you um, if you go ahead and hook it up, and they're reversed, all you have to do is switch your just switch them. Just go from you know switch these. Uh, the two legs back uh, the other in the other direction, so and then that'll correct that problem. So it's kind of a trial and error thing, uh, de depending on where with this panel I want the green to represent the uh, the normal route and then the red for the uh, the right. diverging. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave my jumpers in place so that I can uh, solder everything together and put heat shrink on, make it all nice and neat in here, and then we'll uh, we'll button this up here and then we'll go down there uh, on underneath and we'll finish up down there wiring in the front. Oh, there we go. My daughter is watching YouTube videos of Mickey Mouse. Some guy is opening 30 Mickey Mouse eggs. Okay, so there we go. Panel's all tidied up. Put the, uh, the nut in here like this. We're gonna give it a test. Turn out throws. LED changes light and we're back. So now we got two working switches. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna st install the Digitrax UP5 panels in the staging yard. Uh, we're gonna do two of them. This way when uh, operators are in there picking up the trains, they have places to plug, plug in their throttles, uh, get the, make the consists together and, and pick up their trains before they head out onto the layout. So uh, I'm gonna walk you through these panels. I'm gonna show you a little bit about them. Uh, believe it or not, once you open up the package, you start reading into it, there's actually a, a couple nice little functions built into these panels. And surprisingly, they're only 13. I found them for 13.95 at Train Tech. So um, you know, just to show you, they, they put a, a good little amount of technology into these panels for uh, relatively inexpensive. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is uh, you're going to open up the packaging. Inside, it comes with your instruction manual, comes with the label plate, and the uh, the board. Okay, so once you uh, open up. The, uh, the packaging the, the, and you read into the instructions. The first step, what it's going to do is it's going to tell you to install the front label plate onto the PC board. So what you're going to do is uh, you take these screws out here like this. You install the front plate like that. Put these screws back in. Okay, so then the front label plate is uh, so is installed, and this will go into the fascia, and and you'll screw it in. So let's take a look at this this board, and I'll show you what's going so there's on. There's a couple here. little things that that. Uh, that are built into this uh, UP5 that, that I found pretty neat. Um, first off, if you notice this, on the front panel, these two um, jacks here, that's for your uh, your throttles to plug into on this side. Then you look and you have these other three. So what these two plugs here are for is for your loco net. And what they give you two on the back side so you can daisy chain. So what would happen is if you had your uh, you had your command station here, you'd run a loco net in and then you run a local net out here to the next device and so on all the way down and you can put as many devices in line as you want and daisy chain them together. So that's why they give you all these. This little plug here, this is a 12 volt uh, a power supply and they recommend using the PS14 uh, from Digitrax which is kind of like a wall mount uh, socket or outlet that converts over to DC to 12 volt. And what that'll do is it'll power these two up so when you plug in your throttle 
um, you you take your throttle stops using the battery power, so it just saves on the battery life. So that's that's a nice little function. Also there. on the front here, if you look, um, there's an LED and it shines through the panel over here. Now with that, that's your track status light, and it's actually got three colors. It's got a, I think it was red for um, DC green for AC and orange for DC. What you have to do is you have to plug in, uh, you have to connect these two terminals to your track bus. So what that'll do is it'll report status of your track uh, bus, whether it's on or off. There. Then if you look here on this PC board in between these two here, if I turn it like that, right in there, that little pad there. Now that is for running a 12 volt common. And what you can do is you can plug in one of these into your 12 volt power supply and then you can run a, a common bus out and connect them all together. So this way you can power up to 10 devices. 10 of these panels can be powered off of one PS14. So that's actually a nice little function. So what you have to do is I'm, this, I'm gonna have to solder in a, uh, a, a 22 gauge line onto the pad here and then uh, make my bus from that. And I'll power this one from, a, um, from an adapter. So what I'm gonna be doing for power is I took a 12 volt um, wall outlet and I chopped off the uh, the transformer, and I've uh, established which one is positive and which one is negative. Now, what you have to know about these is there's little diagrams on the uh, transformers, and it tells you what the polarity is. This one happens to be center center po the center point is positive and the outer point is negative, and that just matches up with. Uh, what Digitrax recommends, and that's the same thing, that their center pole is uh, positive and the outer is negative. Um, there is some out there that are reversed where, this, where the outer is actually the positive. So what I did was I used my 12 volt power supply, uh, my bench to, uh, device, just to test and figure out which one of these leads was positive and which was negative, because I didn't want to rip this apart and take this crimp connection off to find out which was wired to what. So. So then what I'll do is I'll just plug this, this in and I'll run this over to my 12 volt bus, which is underneath the, um, the staging yard and I'll solder it in. I'll power one panel and then I'll put the, uh, the common bus out to, all, to, the other, to the second panel. Okay, so before we get started, um, we have to consider out the layout of, of how we want to lay these. Now, I'm gonna show you something uh, just to bring this to your attention. So, uh, of course, the bottom part of my fascia here has, no, has nothing behind it. So it's going to be a good spot to cut the hole for the board to go through. But also there's a, the one by four is up here so that I can anchor this into it just so that it's nice and secure. So when you go to push in, you know, it doesn't flex. The second thing you want to consider is I have throttle pockets coming that are going to hold the throttles to the fascia. But you want to make sure that your wire can make it to the uh, RJ12 uh, connector because you don't want to put, let's say, the pan, the connector, uh, the pocket up here, and your panel down here, because now your wire can't reach, so you won't be able to put it in the pocket and plug it in, because then it kind of defeats the purpose. So we're gonna put the po the po throttle pocket down low like this, and I'll put my panel up high on the fascia here, so that the wire can connect. Okay. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this this uh, I just took the face plate off. I'm gonna mark my holes because I have to make a uh, a hole in the, the fascia for the PC board to fit through. Now we're just going to use a uh, round head wood or a round head wood screw and get it uh, started into the one by four. There you go, nice and secure. So these top two screws went away because the one by four runs right underneath. So. All right, so that's all set, now we'll get to wiring. Okay, so uh, I just went ahead and soldered on the common line to the uh, to the, MP, uh, the, the UP5. Originally, I thought it had to go on the top side, in there, but that was I was gonna melt those plastic by trying to get it in there, so it's actually attached to the bottom, and yeah, we'll see if this works. I mean, it looks like it's just hanging on, but, uh, and it's very, 
fr you know, it just you're soldering to the bottom of a PC board. It's not like there's any um, any like hard wire connection or anything like that. So we'll see. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our uh, adapter. I'm talking about my 12 volt bus. What do you see here is I marked the positive lead with a piece with some red paint. Installed into my connector. There you have it tied in let me go fire up the 12 volt bus and give it a test okay so uh i've got the uh, power all hooked up we're going to go ahead and hook up our uh loconet cables tie these panels into the loconet Okay, so local nut cables in, power's in. I'm gonna go ahead and power up the booster for this this sector. Now I'll plug this in. Test my throttle ops. All right, so there you have it. So uh, after about an hour or two, we installed two UP5s down here in the fascia. So now we can plug in our throttles, and uh, we have uh, power through the throttle, so we don't got to worry about wasting our batteries. Also, I hooked up because I hooked up that power. And we also have the track status indicator here on the UP5 so we can tell the sec the status of the, of the section of track that it's attached to. So that's a great feature. So as I said, these UP5s, they got a lot of little, little uh, gadgets involved for you know only 13 bucks. So I put two panels in here now. So this way we can have throttles on the standby for the, for the crews when they go to take the, the trains out of staging onto the layout. They can all be all set up. Uh, now I'm just waiting for my throttle pockets to come in and we'll, we'll just install them on the fascia and we'll be uh, good to go. Okay, so now the start staging yard is done. Uh, the only last little thing that I'm going to do is, is probably paint the fascia, but I'll wait till we choose the fascia color for the layout and then I'll come back and paint this. Otherwise, now it's done. Um, now I can put my trains in here and stage them for when I want to do testings out in the layout room. And I can just run a quick train out. Otherwise, before I was setting stuff up and having to run it. So now this makes it a lot easier. Okay, so now all we got to do is just uh, get it all set up and we can take our train out onto the layout. Okay, so that's going to put a wrap on episode 13. So the staging yard is done, so we can put a big check in that box and uh, move on. So now we're in here in the layout room, we're going to get started working on the layout. Now I know in the past we've talked that uh, you know after I finish the staging yard that we're going to start working on the, the the junction over there that and the the helix, but I've decided to move in a different direction. Uh, I'm just I'm dying to get some trains running. I, I need something just to you know have a little relaxation time. So what I've decided to do is come over here to Lakehurst and we're going to start working on the mini helix. And um, so as you can see right here. The bench work looks a little different, and that's because I already hit, went ahead and started putting in the first level. So once the mini helix is done, then we're going to go ahead and get started working on the main line. And we're going to lay track from uh, Lakehurst all the way down to Freehold. Uh, this way I can run some trains, and we can get down to Freehold to the run around, turn them around, and then run them back. This way, you know, when I'm not doing work, uh, I can just come down here and, and relax a little bit. So that's all I have for you this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed following along, and we'll see you next episode, episode 14. All right, thanks for watching.